My Usos, the Toa Samoa rugby team, they are going to the men's final of the Rugby League World Cup. This is a big deal. They are making history in the world of sports, in the world of rugby. If this is the first time that uh, our island, our country, our culture of Samoa has ever gone to the finals uh, for any sport. They are making history and I could not be more proud of them. We could not be more proud of them. And I got goosebumps right now. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I was there with you guys on Saturday. I put on a Toa Samoa jersey and I was glad. Take that field. Man, I'd be running that rock with you guys. I'd probably get my ass kicked, <laughs> but that's okay. My Usos, I love you. I'm so proud of you. We are all so proud of you. Take that field, make history, and win. G'day everybody, welcome to episode 274 of Not The Footy Show, it's our World Cup Final Preview Edition, I'm Warwick Nicholson, that is Rob Cox. Mate, people are watching on the YouTube again, I think it's your smiling mm. face. Mm. Yeah, I bet it's not. <laughs> it's your dulcet tones, that's what it is, or your conspiracy Maybe. theories. <laughs> we like a good Got a few of those. Got so, a few of those. Australia Samoa at the uh, glorious time of 3am, the sexy new time of 3am uh, Sunday morning uh, for the World Cup final. Teams are in. Well, the 1-19s to are in, Foxsmith, because we couldn't possibly list players in order for like guides or anything and, and get it out of the way before the final. And we'll get to uh, other things that have been uh, pushed ahead of the final for some stupid reason, a la the golden boot. Uh, Australia 1-17, to it looks like. Unless uh, Mal pulls a late Swifty, uh, DCE and uh, Ruben Cotter will be the extra players. And Samoa, Valmanu Brown is out. So they have a major issue at hooker. And we'll get to that in a sec. CHT um, will play nine. And it's a question of whether they bring Ken Sio or Martin Tapau onto the bench. Is Mal Meninga going to go with an extra playmaker on the bench for the World Cup final? That is the question, Cocksmith. I don't think he will. Um, I don't think. I don't think he's got the nerve to do that, mate. Um, you know, the the thing that annoys me about always bracketing DCE in the eighteenth and nineteenth is there's always that that lingering. I mean, look, I, I think Nathan Cleary is very very uh, strong mentally, mm. but if he wasn't as strong as he is mentally, that lingering kind of DCE just. And it's not it's not Cherry not Cherry Evans's fault. No. I mean, it, it just is what it is. But that lingering presence of the ex incumbent halfback being named in the nineteen, you know, some will say, oh, it's it's just for coverage. They've already got Ben Hunt for coverage. Ben Hunt is arguably as good a halfback as he is a hooker, mm-hmm. and he can cover. You know, um, Harry Grant can play eighty minutes. And even if you can't, you can you can always find someone else to play dummy half. I know that dummy half's a very special position, but you can you can cover that. You know you can plug the hole. I, I just don't I just don't like the fact that that you know and and it's been really for me it's been the story of this this whole tour is that that before they even left they were unable to pick their best team. They changed their numbers around, in my opinion, because of that issue. Yep. And and now they just can't cut the umbilical cord and say, you know what, we're moved on. I, I said I said in a, a Facebook post this week, some Queenslander was just you know, some narky Queenslander was screeching like a banshee about <laughs> DCE. And I said, look, fact of the matter is, DCE isn't even in the best three halfbacks that could play for Australia in the comp. He's not. Mm. I, I'll be honest with you. This is how I rate them. Mm-hmm. One, two, and three for me, as far as New South Wales goes, and Australia, in my opinion, would be Cleary, Mitchell Moses, Nico Hines. Woo! Tell you what, the the Mitchell Moses train's turned right around. And you know that I don't dig him. 
Yeah. You know that I don't dig him. I think Jerome Hughes is better than probably Moses and um, uh, Nico Hines. But as far as Australian eligible halfbacks go, there's no there's no Queenslander in my top three. I mean, and that's just the way it is. Okay. Yeah, um, fair enough. Uh, and and to to you know, I, I, like I said in that post, the same as that in that post that I was mentioning at the bottom, I wrote, I think DC is lucky to tour, and I've said that before here. Yep, you have. Um, and you know, my opinion is just that; it's an opinion, but I think it's a pretty popular opinion, to be fair. Um, if DC anyway. comes in though, Cox Smith, mm. the current bench is Cam Murray, Patrick Carrigan, Tino, and Harry Grant. Yep. I actually don't think any of those three, if those four will miss out if DC comes in. The guy who will miss out if DC comes in is Regan Campbell Gillard. Okay. So you reckon he'll he'll hook Gillard? I reckon and have he didn't use him much in the last game. Uh well didn't feel like he did. And he underused no. Tino. I just have a feeling you start Tino, you punt Regan. This is if they bring DC in. I'm not saying they should necessarily should so if they do this. And um you get DC on the bench with Grant, and that's the question. I mean, you can't have Hunt and DC on the bench at the same time, so Grant's got to exclusively come off the bench as a hooker. But that's the only window I see. I don't, I don't see him dropping Murray. He's Carrigan, not going to Tino. Yeah, and, and he's certainly not going to drop Cleary now. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't see DC getting in, but I, I actually think that the the bigger punish is actually still having him named in the nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's coverage. I, I, what I what, what impact you, you've sort of alluded to it, but you sent a message to me before we started. Is it is it Mal not given the keys to Cleary? Is that look? We haven't even got nah. to Samoa yet, but is it going to make a nah. difference? I, 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 I don't think I don't think it's Mal um, not given the keys to Cleary. I think it's Mal not wanting to upset Jerry Evans. Okay, that's that's straight up what I think it is, and that's what I I honestly believe. My own opinion is that's what the whole numbering thing's about. Um, and it's so silly. It's so superficial. But there can be no other reason. Otherwise, yeah. you just name your, you just name your <laughs> 1 to 17. Why wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. because we don't know who they are, really. I mean, <laughs> Mal Meninga's been around the league for a long, long time. When they choose their team, when they choose their – how many players went, by the way? 20, 24. Four or five. You know who your best 17 are. You know who they are before you begin. Okay, we'll go over there and we'll try trial a few out. But uh, either way, nearly anyone that I know that 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 knows rugby league will be able to pick a best seventeen out of that twenty four or twenty five. Um, why not just name them one through seventeen, and then the other guys can put them in alphabetical order. Well, let's just um, put this on the table as well. New Zealand went in with a pretty awesome squad, but they named one to twenty four. They named who they thought was going to be in those positions, and I'm just looking at the team list at the moment from the semi final and. You know, it went 1, 2, 4, 21, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 17, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20. And then Kenny Bromwich, who was probably the biggest surprise of the semifinals being omitted, he was 18th man. Yeah. They, they stuck pretty much to what it was. And mm. I look at the, I mean, they, the players um, shop, swap jerseys after the semi and, you know, James Fisher, Fisher Harris gives his number ten away to the fourteen of Nathan Cleary. Uh, I know it's little mm. and minor, and but it's not. It, it is. It, it it is very little. But the but also, mate, I, I find it a little bit hard to watch. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not exactly blind, and I've got a fairly sizable TV at home. But still, seeing seeing Trebojevic, is he? What's he in number five? Five. Our front row in the semi final was five, three, and six. I mean, it's just weird, and and. You know, I think Hagen and, and Meninga would know that. And and I and it's just, you know, I, I noticed the girls did the same thing, just to, yeah. you know, oh, just yeah. to stick solid. Uh, mate, I, I, I've said it before. It's just, I'm over it. I, I, I really, really, really hope we never ever see this numbering crap again because it is crap. Well, let, um, let, let's not forget, though, this, is, was, this was a decision by the organisers to establish that you had to pick the yeah, one number okay. for the whole tournament. Yeah. Let's it's a like, decision that's, that's by the organisers, there. which is which is stupid. stupid. And they've done it. They've done it for a couple of reasons. They've done it because that's what they do in the Super League. You get a number for the year. Yeah. No one gives a rat's about the Super League. And and secondly, um, it's to it's so they don't have to 
it's so when they're writing out programs, they they know who everyone's number is. And we'll get to that whole it's, programs pre-game thing in a second. But Australia yeah, will be a program these uh, days anyway. They'll be one to seventeen. I expect DC or Cotter to be eighth man. They'll both miss out though from the actual team. As we say, RCG I think is the one in most danger if DC mm. gets a pull on the jersey. Pretty happy with the team. Uh, the Samoans have some issues. They don't have a hooker. Chanel Havis Tavita is going to have to play 80 minutes from the looks of things. And the big question for them is more surrounding uh, does Marty Tapao get back into the 17? Because he was 18th man the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, Chanel will be able to cover it. Um, at hooker, he's very skillful and, you know, he's got a decent pass on him. It may not be as crisp as someone like um, Harry Grant or Hunt. But the issue for me is, is Chanel going to be able to handle the traffic that they're going to send his way? I mean, yeah. you know, these days most hookers um, are making 40 or 50 tackles a game. Um, when you're playing 5'8", you don't make that many tackles a game. You might make half of those, you might make 25 or 30. Mm-hmm. Um uh, but he the, the 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 work rate is going to be much harder for him. It's going to be more difficult for him then to attack once he gets gassed. Um, he's dangerous. He's quick. He's unpredictable. Um, so there's that. But I, I think it's a I think it's definitely a, a case of thumbs down for that for, for them. It's a massive um, that's problem. Not, it's not ideal because um, they they bring in sorry Ken C O was that eighth man according to NRL.com in the semi not Marty. But oh, okay. you either bring Ken Seo in or Marty in. And then, you know, if Ken Seo goes on the bench, that means you're going to have to move. If you're going to give Harris DeVita a break, you have to move Luai or Milford into the hooking yep. spot because yep. the only other move is maybe Crichton to 5'8 or Lafayette to 5'8, you know, mm. if you're looking for a break. And that's like, I, full disclosure, I don't expect this final to be close. I think Australia are going to win this and win this really, really comfortably. Uh, but it's just, a, it's a shame that Samoa haven't got. You know, Danny Levi, they haven't got... Um, what happened to Danny Levi? Levi? What did he... Apparently it was a personal matter. He had to fly back to Australia to, to to deal with. So I don't know what it is. There's no speculation. And couldn't go back for the final? I don't know. That's just... Okay. He said when they announced that he was out, it was out for the, the rest of the tournament. So Okay. Fair um, enough. And like you look at the Samoan team, they started with Paulo Brown, Royce Hunt, Lingy Sow, Jaden Sewer, and Oregon Kafusi. Papali'i came off the bench, uh, Talangi, Linu, and they're going to add CO or to power. It's they did a wonderful job getting to the final, Cocksmith. But you know the lack of nine is a big deal. But I just I don't think that back line is going to see enough of the pill against Australia to to worry the Kangaroos. Yeah, I, I, look, just for argument's sake, I'd be adding to power um, mm. before CO. Uh, but like you say, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. I, I think Australia will win. Um, look, I'm, I'm not. I'm not thinking that it's going to be a, a absolute whitewash. Yep. Um, but I think it'll be somewhere in. I'll tell you my score in a moment yep. when you yep. ask for it. But, yep. um, uh, but uh, you look at yeah. Um, I, th- I think it'll probably be close for the first twenty twenty five minutes, um, and then we may see Australia kick on a little bit. Um, yeah, Harry that's, that's the way I think it's going to go. Going to have a field day in the middle when he comes on. He's mm. going to run around, run those Samoan forwards into the ground. Let's go to scores. Mm. I mean, I know we're not giving it a lot of time about how the game we won. It's just I don't feel like Samara in this. They did get a shout out from The Rock today. Well done, NRL Roast. Mm. Uh, mm. That came yeah, through. Roasty got him. Uh, which is good. Uh, but yeah, I, England would have given us a contest. I don't think England would have won. I don't think they would have got within 20 points in the end. But this is a wonderful effort for Samoa to get here. And it just has that that feel of, you know, this is the one that sets them up for the next one, potentially. Yeah, um, yeah. well, yeah, let's hope. Get close to us. Let, let's hope they can build on it. Um, that's that's what we want to see. Yep. Um, there's other things to sort out between now and the next well, World Cup. Are they a tier know? one nation and all this sort of business that, that yeah, goes around? And yeah, and eligibility. And, and, and let's be honest, let's let's call it as it is. You know, the, the reason why Samoa have have – made improvements is because their their core players have played higher level football yeah, massive impact. Um, and and uh, you know i would say that to a man nearly every one of those samoan players are are um have been have played all their junior football in australia um and they've basically been a product of australian rugby league um i don't think you'll find that there's too many players in that mob 
that um, have been a, a product of, of Samoa. Um, it's a it's a heritage team, you know, yeah. um, and good on them, good on them. I think they've done well, uh, especially since they lost the first game by how much? <laughs> Sixty four to six or something, wasn't it? Although that oh, doesn't count. Good. That doesn't count. Yeah. Okay. Well, well it well. does. Um, but anyway, they, they apparently accounted they... in the golden boot and the uh, team of the team of the tournament. Yeah. But the final doesn't. The final, the final doesn't. doesn't count. Uh, let's get yeah. scores before we go to that old chestnut. Uh, uh, I'd Australia, say what Samoa what? Thirty four fourteen. Okay, twenty points. I'm going forty to six. Forty to six, and I think the six might be generous. Wow, look at you go! We're going to belt them. <laughs> Just start. Okay, sorry. I, okay. I, I hope I'm wrong for the sake of the contest. Uh, but Teddy is going to have a monster match. Are you? Not, yeah, well, he won't pass. He's not. Gonna, so. he, but he's not going to get replaced after twenty minutes of the last two games. Yeah. Are you going to get up at, at 3 a.m. or are you going to wait for the, the it, full length? It highlights? all depends on how tired I am from cricket on Saturday because I'm supposed mm. to be playing cricket on Sunday as well. So right. we, shall, we shall see. We shall see. I will be sleeping in my own bed, though, uh, which will help. Well, so, that, that, that'll be strange for a Saturday night for you, won't it? Yeah, exactly right. That's what they say. <laughs> uh, who's your man of the match? i got Teddy. Nathan Cleary. Come on. I think he's going to play DCE. Off the bench. No, I think he's. I think Nathan's going to have a good game. I really yeah, do. I have so. Um, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Nathan Cleary. I was just about to say Cameron Murray, but uh, I'm going to stick with Cleary. Uh, I've got Addo Car for a Hattie to go with, I think, the 58 tries he's already scored this tournament. What, uh, what is he on? Is he on 13 or 14? It's something like that. I haven't, I haven't got it in front of me. Um, but yeah, he'll set the record him. for World Cups. Uh, that's the score. That's the final. We have to divulge or to. Um, what's the word, move into another area, which is the absolutely classic rugby league movement, which is let's name our team of the tournament and our player of the year before the most important game in said season. Do you know, do you know why they named the Golden Boot and the team of the year this week, Cocksmith? Do you know why? Have you got any uh, why? No, I, I, no, I don't. I, I can't figure it out for the life of me. But... I imagine it'll be something so. Um, I had a theory. Another word then. No, no, no well, I, it'll be because it'll be because someone's about to go on holidays or something. There, there'll be something. There'll be there'll be some crap reason. I why thought we it had was. To a, I it thought it could be a legitimate sort of reason. Not that I agree with it, but I thought this could, it could be something like they have like an end of World Cup dinner. You know, all the sponsors, all the dignitaries. You know, mm-hmm. this beautiful five course meal. In the middle of London, and you know, let's let's really celebrate nice. what's been an awesome. You know, that'd be awesome. No, 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 Foxman. It was a press event. The people oh, attending nice. were from the press. Okay. So the winners of the wheelchair golden boot, the women's golden boot, and the men's golden boot, they mm. walked down a row of uh, movable chairs to stand in front of a couple of pull-out banners and accept their Player of the Year awards. Big spenders. This is so ordinary. Like, how did how did what benefit does a press event giving this award do for your final that you can't do after the final or at the final or yeah. after the game is finished? A name when it actually might matter that the person who was the best player in the field for the final might actually be eligible. For it, that 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 could be a good thing during the during the uh, you know. Um... The post game, all of the presentations uh, could be great to uh, have your three golden boot winners or your t- player of the. the you you know, can do the wheelchair one is. on the Friday night. And you can do the women's one before the game, like up before the men, like after the women's game is done. Mm. And the whole crowd is there and they applaud it. Instead, it was a bunch of media hacks. Mm. Like this is disgraceful from the World Cup tournament organizers. You can't. I, I, I agree. Great something agree. like this. It's bad enough that we but, saw a nineteen man nominee list get reduced to a five man nominee list. Within 24 hours, and then they named the, t- the actual player of the year, which was Joseph Manu, who I don't have an issue with. He's, he had a fantastic season, but the way they do the Golden Boot, Cox Smith, are you aware of how it's actually done? No, and, and to be quite honest with you, I don't care because I, I can't see how Joseph Manu can be the player of the year. Uh, I, I, mate, I, I think he's a wonderful player, mm. but I can't see how he can be player of the year um, given. His team what we saw from him. Well, no, there's a little bit of that, but you know, I also I've also been around long enough to know that there's players that play in certain teams um, 
that may be outstanding every week, but their team. Don't, but I still don't think I still don't think Joseph Manu is the best player in the world at the moment. I really don't. Well, um, he was on the short list along with Josh Adokar, George Williams, Victor Radley, and Jerome Luai, and that was from a group of nineteen. Mm. There's a couple of points out of this, and the way it's done is three man panel. They pretty much say, yeah, these have been the three best in the tournament because it's not for the. They do include apparently the any specific test they played, so that means no Australian's going to get any consideration uh, for the award because they didn't play halfway through year. They played Origin instead. So the argument would be, well, should Origin then be considered as part of the Golden Boot um, criteria? Of course given, it should. Of course it should. Given that NRL isn't, because the NRL isn't. That's what you've done in the NRL for the year really doesn't matter. Uh, what you've done in the mm. Super League really doesn't matter. It's about what you do in the international spectrum. Well, hold on. Hold on. How did Josh Adokar get on the list? Because he did you just say Josh Adokar. Yeah, because he had he scored all the tries in the lead up games in the tournament. Oh, so the so so the four lead up games or five lead up games they played against Minos count that, more so than the grind of the week in oh, the NRL. Yep, yep, That's yep, yep, smart. yep. That's yeah. Smart. So basically, Mal Meninga's Mate, rotation. This is a BS award. This is a BS. Mal Meninga's award. rotation meant it. that Australians can't win it. Let's not worry about it. Let's just ignore it because uh, for mine, Teddy should have been it, there ahead of. George Williams, if you were going to put an Australian in that list. Uh, it wasn't Teddy's fault that Mal placed him in the, the other game, uh, but he yeah. was outstanding every time I was crunched on the field. And he should win it because if he's the best player on the field in the final, which is the one with, that matters. Look, yeah. With all due respect to Joseph Manu, who's won, won it and is a wonderful player, that award is bogus. Yeah. The bogus award. It just gets worse. If, if, the, <laughs> if, the NRL isn't, if the NRL games aren't counted, they're not. it's bogus. They're not. It's bogus. Uh, the team of the tournament is just as hilarious because Cameron Murray apparently was the best second rower in the tournament and he played like 10 minutes there the entire tournament. Mm-hmm. What are they watching? Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's more to do with, it's more to do with what in. they're smoking, I think. Uh, it's not what they're watching. They're, not that hard. They're sitting around. Can... Yeah. Let's, let's ignore it. It's, it's crap. Anyway, let's move let's on. wrap up uh, the World Cup final preview. We've both got Australia winning comfortably. You've got Australia 34-14. Uh, I actually wrote down DC amount of match with Nathan Cleary man of the match, um, and I've got Australia forty to Samoa six with Teddy as man of the match and Adokar to possibly break double figures for tries. Uh, Coxsmith, we have got a little thing called recruitment whispers coming back after mm. uh, we've wrapped up here. Uh, lasting impressions from the World Cup. We may or may not do a recap of the final depending on um, how well sure. traffic it is. If it's a close one, we might get together. But um, yep. Any last Look, I've 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 enjoyed watching Australia play again. I love yeah, watching so, the, so good. the green and gold. Um, I've absolutely hated the numbering system, uh, as I've as I've you know, as I've basically belted on about it every time I've had a chance to talk about it. Um, I don't think we should ever see it again. I don't think an administrator should be in charge of num- putting out numbers. It should be a positional thing. Yeah. Um, and if they can't if they can't rotate numbers, then Pick your best seventeen to begin with, and then carry on from there. Um, it's 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 just a uh, it's been a stain for me on the World Cup. That's best game tournament for me was the Samoa England semi final. Yes, uh, I agree. There was a couple of really good ones. There was one I think uh, was it PNG and Tonga in the first week. That's another one that stands out for me. That was a really good game. Uh, I, I like watching PNG. Yeah, I didn't think the Australia New Zealand semi final was as great as everyone went on about, but still happy to see him play. Uh, but the moment of World Cup for me is when Jamaica scored against New Zealand. That's my favourite <laughs> moment. Favourite moment yeah. of World Cup. Yeah, I, look, I agree as well. And I can't tell you the guy's name because I forget it, but I know that he was he was very, very happy uh, about scoring against New Zealand and, and uh, it's something he'll carry to his grave and good on him. Um, highlight of your life doing that. And you know what else has been a highlight of my life, Cocksmith? Doing podcasts again with you, my friend. Oh yes, yes. It's uh it's been wonderful, mate. Um, getting getting back into it every week. Let's hope we can keep it up for the entirety of season twenty three. Woohoo. Big promises. I like it. Uh that's episode two seventy four. I've been Warren Gilson. That has been Rob Cox, and we will speak to you on the recruitment whisperers number six. Take us out, Coxman. Talk to you in a few minutes, mate. Pepsi. Not the footy show. show? You know, I was always that dream as a kid to play in the NRL, play for New South Wales and eventually Australia, but now to be here and be captaining uh, my country, a uh, very proud moment for my family and myself. And um, yeah, get to play on Old Trafford, the Rugby League World Cup final, not many people will be able to say that. So uh, it's very exciting, can't wait for Saturday. Yeah, you know, it's quite a special moment for myself now and 
uh, quite privileged to do this. Um, yeah, I think growing up it was more so the rugby union scene and seeing the Manu Samoa growing up. So uh, look back on years on end um, when I'm done playing footy and, and remember it as probably one of the most humbling experiences that I've ever been able to achieve. Yahoo! Not this week's show. Show? You've been sleeping over there? Pepsi.